Hi, I am Dr. Shajil and today's scenario is a 10 years old child presented to you with a unilateral proptosis. Now that's a very open-ended question. No further signs and symptoms or the history of disease is, has been given. So you have to tell the differential diagnosis. But first you should know what is proptosis. Our orbit is a closed pear shaped cavity and there is a limited space for everything. So when some mass it accumulates behind the globe or above or below the globe that space is filled and then the eye has to move forward it has to bulge it has to proptose to accommodate that mass so that is called proptosis so the most common differential of this uh, 10 years old kid with unilateral proptosis is optic nerve glioma followed by optic nerve sheath meningioma though uh, meningioma is more common in adults but it can also occur in children and in when it occurs in children it is more aggressive whereas more benign in adults and then the third one is the rhabdomyosarcoma that is also one of the most common orbital malignancies in childhood and then you can have lymphangioma you can have mucosal you can have deep dermoid you can have orbital capillary hemangiomas so what are the features of the optic nerve glioma you can say that it's a slow growing tumor of the glial tissue and it has a strong association with neurofibromatosis 1 so if you know the features of the neurofibromatosis 1 you can also relate it and what are the other features the other features are along with proptosis there is optic disc swelling initially and atrophy later on and then degrees of vision and then in optic nerve sheath meningioma it has also it has also same uh, symptoms degrees vision proptosis and disc swelling and then atrophy in a rhabdomyosarcoma there is ptosis along with proptosis and in lymphangioma there is a sudden decrease of vision and proptosis with inferior dystopia with inferior dystopia and when sudden painful loss of vision occurs that is due to hemorrhages into those cysts those that are that is known as chocolate cysts so here uh, diagrammatically i am showing you the orbit uh, you can say it is a triangular shaped uh, area and th that's the eyeball you can you are seeing the side view of the orbit now that closed space has got extraocular muscles uh, optic nerve orbital fats a lot of uh, blood vessels nerves going on so if there is any extrinsic mask and that is enlarging it will push the globe outward and cause proptosis so if it is an optic nerve glioma uh, how uh, you should do mag MR MR is very important in the cases of proptosis MR will show fusiform enlargement of the optic nerve I will show you how the fusiform enlargement looks uh, and you should observe uh, if it's a stationary lesion patient has got good vision and non disfiguring proptosis progression to progression is monitored with MR and surgery is done for progressive painful vision threatening lesions now here we are showing you fusiform optic nerve glioma that's how it it will look on the MRI after that uh, uh, optic nerve sheath meningioma 
you have to also do MR and magnetic resonance imaging will show tram track tubular enlargement of the nerve that will tell you that it's optic nerve sheath meningioma you have to treatment is same observation if the vision is good and surgery if it's a progressive lesion here we will show you how the tram track looks like on the CT scan or MRI and uh, there are optic nerve uh, optic disc collaterals in optic nerve sheath meningioma as well so disc collaterals if you are given in the scenario it will give you a clue that it's optic nerve sheath meningioma so that's how optic nerve sheath meningioma will look like then lymphangioma you will have a CT scan will show blood filled cysts spaces in the superior orbit most of the time either you have to observe it or injection of the sclerosing agents can be given in lymphangiomas then deep orbital dermides you should just know the names it's a very rare but well circumscribed mass in the orbit can be seen on the MR or CT scan capillary hemangioma and it will increase with crying or valsarma manure in mucosil there will be headaches tender mass and CT scan will confirm and then you have for the management you have to refer the mucosil to the ENT so they will excise it so that's how the cystic spaces of the chocolate filled cystic spaces of the lymphangioma looks like so along with proptosis you should check whether it is axial non axial whether it is, there is dystopia present or not exposure keratopathy optic nerve dysfunction and motility disorders all those should be checked in case of proptosis so that was all about the proptosis thank you very much